Uh, you can't see me? No, I can see you on Discord, but OBS is not showing you. I'm sure chat wants to see your lovely face. <laughs> this is my unimpressive moment. Ah! Oh my goodness. Sorry, you you appeared full screen. Chat just got treated to full screen poll. <laughs> I don't know if they were ready for that, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ready for that. Alright, hang on. This was working earlier, chat, and obviously when I went live it decided to break, so, you know. Uh, yeah. oh, sure. Hang on, it's starting, it's starting, it's starting. We started then, from scratch, okay. starting with a clean sheet of paper. Zen turned out to be a grounds-up design, which doesn't come along very often. In the life of an engineer, you get to build something this significant once, twice, if you're lucky, three times in your life. EMD enables the engineers to go off and innovate and to bring to market what it is that they dream about. I'm extremely pleased to show you for the first time dream about? the name of our new CPU. How's it going, chat? Are we all excited? Are we hyped? To see Ryzen in action. What? I am ultra we excited. We wanted to disrupt <laughs> the PC market. We wanted to bring innovation, choice, and performance to as many people as possible. Come on, Mama. Show us what we've got. Performance PCs. <laughs> it was about delivering more. I really love, by the way, the uh, paintbrush at the end. Uh, uh, Horizon Threadripper acknowledges that there are people okay, they're kind of piping up a lot here on the same PC and need the scalability yeah, a little and need bit. the performance <laughs> to do that. But, you know, and that's what's really exciting. It's finally here! Zen Threadripper. 3! It's happening! It's Our happening! To our I know, right? ...that we would deliver to the roadmap that we set out, and momentum is now on our side. The anticipation oh, you did it back. around third gen rise <laughs> is really impressive. Meet the world's you don't need to be, need to be recording processor. anything, by the way, do you? No, no, no. Now, no, no, no. Although, although maybe, actually, maybe, actually, maybe just record, like, ah, well maybe record the event we just in case, it makes me but we should so be good. Proud okay. to be able to, to look back and, and say that I was part of that. Our mission with Ryzen has always been clear. It's about making the right bets <laughs> three to five years in advance and making sure that they come to fruition. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that they've got some really cool stuff to appeal if they're going to stop the hype. I mean, yeah. They're not going to be like doing all this hype and then, here you go, it's just a refresh, guys, and show Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. That is a really hyped up uh, image of Lisa there. Joining us today. I've been looking forward to this moment all year, and I know many of you have too. It's been a challenging year for everyone as we've navigated the COVID-19 pandemic globally. But one thing we've learned is just how important high performance computing technologies really are. From work to school to gaming to entertainment, the PC is now the computing platform of choice in 2020. And I'm you've really got the code, excited but at least you've got the 12, uh, 12 or 16 cores. Platforms, and especially uh, let me know how the volume is for the now, stream, guys, uh, as in on AMD's end. I've just turned it up so a little bit. much excitement around the next gen consoles. We are so proud to power the new Sony PlayStation 5 with a high-performance custom chip featuring our AMD Ryzen CPU and AMD Radeon GPU technology. And we are equally proud that custom AMD processors also power the new Microsoft Xbox Series X and Series S consoles, again featuring our high-performance Ryzen and Radeon technologies. These consoles are bringing just incredible technology to gamers all over the world, and are really a result of just deep engineering partnerships over many, many years with both Sony and Microsoft. Now, gaming is at the heart of so much of what we do at AMD. Whether you're talking about PCs or consoles or cloud gaming and mobile, AMD 
AMD loves gaming, and we like to say gaming begins with AMD. So today, we're going to talk specifically well, we about our next-gen PC gaming platform. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about Ryzen. Now, you guys know we brought the first generation of Ryzen to market in 2017. And we actually had one goal. I don't know if you it noticed this, but they're focusing the this on a gaming PC chip, which is quite different uh, messaging. Now, we knew we wouldn't get there in one step, doing, to be honest. but with each generation this of Ryzen, it's gotten better. This is telling me that their gaming performance is ahead of we Intel. We focused on yeah, how do we deliver more performance? How do we deliver the best features? And how do we give more capabilities to all of you PC enthusiasts so that you can do more than you ever thought with your desktop or in your notebook? And we've made great, Is great on this side? It shouldn't be. We That's started with strange. Ryzen and desktops, and then we introduced Ryzen Threadripper in uh, high-end desktops. I have no and idea now, that actually, Ryzen is in many amazing notebooks with Ryzen 4000 series. No. I, I think it's safe then. to say no that AMD loves the PC, and I think also it's safe to say that PC users love Ryzen. So we really appreciate that. No, 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 nothing like that. Now look, let's just focus on the desktop for a few minutes. The progress we have made over the last few years has been really amazing. If you look at the market before Ryzen, the desktop PC was on sort of an incremental performance slope for the last many years. Now, over the past three years, we've significantly changed that trajectory and really completely reset expectations as we've gone from first-gen Ryzen to second-gen, now to third-gen Ryzen. We were, we were the, the first, first to launch a 7 nanometer desktop, desktop processor, processor, and today, third gen Ryzen leads in so many areas. We're, we're the highest in multi threaded performance. We are the best in terms of power efficiency, and third gen Ryzen is an absolutely great gaming processor. But as you know, we're really ambitious, so our work with Ryzen is never done. Our engineers have been on this maniacal focus of what can we do more? What can we do better? So today, we're here to talk about our brand new CPU core. You've all been waiting for it. It's all oh, about Zen 3. Transition. And with Zen 3, we focused again on bringing the best to the PC market. I'm so proud of what we've accomplished. I have no idea why it's actually Zen 3 really increases sorry. our lead in no overall clue. performance. It increases our lead in power efficiency. And also now, got, um, it delivers the best single-threaded performance like that? No, in gaming. No, it isn't. That's why I'm confused. We've made no massive idea. changes in the core architecture, and I'm so sure maybe, all of you uh, want to know what's inside that three. Like that. So let me hand it over to AMD CTO Mark Papermaster maybe to give you all the details. Maybe try that with some window, like Twitch Mark? or YouTube or something like that. It's only on YouTube, and I've only opened an well, ABS, so it literally should not be echoing. I couldn't echoing. be more no excited idea. than to share a little bit more I'm about the tree uh, and our progression to get it's here. Fine. It's fine. It's, it's been, been quite a journey. journey. We set a course over five years ago to design a family of high-performance x86 CPUs. Our goal, very simply, outright leadership. We set up the team so that development of multiple processor generations could be done in parallel with designers leapfrogging from one generation to another. This has resulted in consistent delivery to the market as promised. I could not be more proud than to help unveil our third generation of Zencore debuting in Ryzen desktops this fall. It is a beast in performance and will deliver absolute leadership in the x86 market. Zen brought us back into high performance with a 52% improvement in, in structure for clock in a single generation. It built a strong base for us to build upon as we developed the Zen family. Last year, Zen 2 brought double-digit percent increase in, in structure for clock and debuted 7 nanometer in chiplet technology. That 7 nanometer efficiency enabled leadership, multi-core performance, and core density. The innovative chiplet implementation allowed us ease of manufacturing with the small 7 nanometer yet, die pan. and scalability to leadership core oh, count, sorry. and now Zen 3. Skillet Pan wow. asked how many freights. Wow, what a great freights. job by the design team to improve uh, every aspect the same of the CPU, as previously. delivering leadership performance in that same so 7 nanometer core node. Threads, I think. Higher frequency, higher in structure per clock, with design improvements across all of the CPU components, and lower latency on top of that. You look at uh, some of the key elements. Yeah. Give, give call, a new give layout to pop up. processor that brings all the cores onto <laughs> a unified eight-core complex, and that accelerates core-to-core -core communication. That's especially helpful for gaming workloads. 
that consolidation actually allows every core to directly what? access I'm sorry? 32 megabytes of L3 cache. And that dramatically accelerates workloads that are latency sensitive, like gaming. And finally, significant changes throughout the Zen 3 architecture, generating a 19% instruction for cock uplift. That's on top of the significant gains that we had just in the mid of last year with Zen 2. Altogether, Zen 3 is our most significant architectural update yet across the Zen family. We made the Zen 3 floating point and integer execution units wider, more <laughs> flexible, and allows us to deliver more execution capability to the user at a lower latency. We've increased the number of loads and stores that we can do versus Zen 2. Can you turn your mic down just a little bit, Paul? Wider um, execution um, yeah, I think you're blowing out, blowing out a little bit. We've added more branch prediction uh, bandwidth. It allows Zen 3 to tackle back-to-back -back mm -hmm. predictions much more quickly, reducing the delays. We call it zero bubble. These innovations keep Zen 3 ahead of the industry norm on generational improvements and position Zen 3 based Ryzen to be a clear <laughs> was, desktop it, performance <laughs> leader. Microprocessor performance engineering never has one single bullet. It takes focused microprocessor engineering. Sounds better to it's me, a yeah. broad I'm set sure of improvements that, that are needed chat? to make a great oh architecture. Lord, it takes that. innovation on it's all of the key levers. Jimmy, Zen 3 is a total course. front to back redesign. The microarchitecture had a laser a, focus on, quite catch it. on every element, end-to-end -end um, improvement, caching, load store, uh, uh, our execution units, that, our uh, prefetch, okay. our prefetch, dispatch, our eco, eco, front end, load store. Zen 2, in fact, exactly had been organized with two four core cache components that was tightly integrated. Uh, that was a very good design, but what we found, very good design, but what we found <laughs> is that we brought that <laughs> together into that cache single wait, wait, unified what? cache core so complex cache uh, that we brought that uh, direct access to 32 megabytes of L3 cache rather than oh, 16 oh, megabytes okay. that we have in Zen 2. That direct That's access to a cache pool of this size is very significant for gaming. They tend to make frequent use, of course, of the memory subsystem, and in fact, many games have a dominant threat. And that, and that makes especially heavy use of the cache, and, and that, that thread, thread now sees effectively twice, twice the L3, L3 cache, cache in Zen, Zen 3. 3. So, so every, every core, core can now communicate directly to the cache, cache without traversing, traversing across, across the die. The die. Okay. And that That's reduces cool. latency. And it, and it stays, stays synchronized, synchronized for applications, applications using AI, AI audio, audio, physics, physics and, more. and more. You can, you can see, see that we continue our relentless commitment to energy efficiency with every generation. We're always, always honing, honing our design, design methodologies, methodologies to focus, focus on performance, performance for what, even, even as we make, make the processors, processors faster, faster gamers. gamers. Zen, Zen 3 is, is no, no different. Delivers up to 24% improvement in power efficiency versus prior, prior generation. generation. That's a double-digit double performance, performance for watt uplift in the, in the same, same process node. node. And that's, and that's on, on top of all the the best, best computer, computer experience, experience for our customers. customers. Thank, Thank you. you. And, let and let me welcome, welcome back Lisa to now show, show off our Zen, Zen 3 and, and new Ryzen, Ryzen processors. Here we go. Exactly, this is what I want to say. Thank the you, architecture that was great. interesting. I'm so, I'm so proud of what the team has accomplished with Zen 3. We really, we really focused, focused on what is, what is most important, important for gamers, gamers and enthusiasts. And at 19% IPC increase, it's, it's our, our largest, largest increase generation over generation since we launched the Zen, Zen family. So now, so now let's see Zen 3 in action. I'm so, I'm so proud, proud to show you for the very oh, first time the AMD Ryzen 5000 series for high performance PCs. The world's first Zen 3 powered CPU. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. Okay. 12 cores, 24 threads, and a boost up to 4.8 GHz. 
Mm. It's, it's a, a very, very special, special product. product. Oh, cool. The ultimate, ultimate enthusiast, enthusiast processor. processor. Compared, Compared to the 3900 XT, XT, the 5900 X has 19% higher IPC, higher clock speeds, and all the Zen 3 core improvements that Mark talked about, all while remaining at 105 watts. This, this makes, makes Ryzen 5900 X a big upgrade, upgrade from third gen, gen Ryzen all around, but especially in gaming. Hmm. Now, now let me turn, turn it over to Robert Pallet to show you the 5900 X in action. Thanks, Thanks Lisa. Lisa. Hey, hey everyone, everyone, let me, let me give, give you a sense, sense of just, just how much faster, faster the 5900 X is. I have no idea why it's echoing, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know. There's only one source. To do that, we're going to use Shadow Legend Trainer, the game I personally love. I have no clue. And a game we was often look at to judge CPU performance. Unfortunately, you are just going to run the built-in benchmark here at 1080p. Using the high image quality reset on two otherwise identical systems. So you, can you can see a whopping 28% increase just by moving from the 39XT to the 5900X in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And, and as you will soon see, wait, the performance of the 5900X is faster than the competing processors as well. Now as any enthusiast knows, 28% from a processor change is a massive upgrade. But that's, but that's what, what AMD customers, customers like, like me can look forward to. to. This, this truly demonstrates the gaming, gaming strength, strength for Zen 3 when you, when you combine the historic IPC uplift, unified, uplift, unified cores, cores, and unified, unified cache tools. tools. Now, as, now we as we zoom out to look, to look at a wider, wider set, set of games, you can see that the 28% uplift in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is joined by many titles with significant double-digit performance improvements. The games, the games are even, even bigger, bigger in titles like, like CSGO, CSGO and, and League, League of Legends, Legends with the highest possible frame rate, oh. practically the number one priority, priority to be competitive. competitive. Overall, gamers oh, upgrading from the Ryzen 3000 series to the Ryzen 5000 series can expect an average performance improvement of 26% at 1080p. Again, this is just a monumental performance jump for an in-socket in -socket upgrade, upgrade in the same motherboard, and a, and a true, true testament for how good crazy. Zen 3 is in gaming. In gaming. Now, as now, as many, many know, strong gaming performance relies on strong single-core single performance. That's exactly what Zen, Zen 3 has. has. And I want to show you using Cinebench, Cinebench R20 single thread. thread. There are there many ways, ways to assess single thread performance, but Cinebench is a fast and easy tool that you can run at home. And it's, and it's one, one of the 25 workloads that we use uh, to calculate the 90 percent improvement in should just from our from our mind. The cycle. As, As you can see, the 5900X 5900 is the first desktop, desktop processor to ever break, break a 600, 600 score. score. We, don't we don't break it by a little, little we break it by a lot, lot with a score of 631. We had aimed for you loud and clear as you challenged us to continue investing in single core performance and the and results, results speak for themselves. themselves. The combination, the combination of, IPC, of IPC, frequency, cores, and cache give AMD the, the fastest cores in the desktop, desktop market and give you, you the best, best possible, possible gaming, gaming performance. So let's I'm take not explaining it because I'm just flabbergasted. Into a head -to -head head -to -head I'm actually On flabbergasted. The game you just saw, the AMD, AMD Ryzen 9, 9 is, a is a clear winner, winner at 1080p. 1080p. As, As I, I promised, promised you, AMD, AMD wins, wins in Shadow of the Tomb, Tomb Raider by, by plus six, six, and is joined by many other games popular with reviewers and users like you. League of Legends and CSGO are once again standout victories for the Ryzen 9 5900X. So that was a lot of data very quickly. Let's take a step back. Let's recap. You saw an average uplift of 26% for Ryzen customers upgrading from the 3000 series to the 5000 series. You just watched AMD deliver the highest single core performance in the entire desktop PC market. And you just saw AMD clearly offer the best performance of any gaming processor on the market. I will put it plainly. We know that you're going to wait for benchmarks. But customers who buy processors purely for their gaming performance will absolutely want a Ryzen 9 5900X for the best possible PC gaming experience. Now let's bring Lisa back up to give you more details on these awesome gaming processors. Uh, yeah, I muted. Thanks, Robert. Uh, that was fantastic. Paul's mic when he's I not speaking because I, that the Ryzen I don't know why it's causing it, but it is, is the best that, gaming processor in the world. No clue why. Now let's but... look at the stack. 
in the 5000 series, uh, yeah, we have a great for some noise. reason, every it's causing an echo when I've got the sound for your mic on, so I'm just going to have mute it when you're not speaking. I don't know why it's causing it. I literally have no clue why it's causing it, but it is. So I'm just going to mute it when you're not speaking. That is bizarre as hell. Yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> this didn't happen when we did the PlayStation event, so I have no clue. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into it another time. Now let's talk about price and availability. The 6 core 5600X is $299. The 8-core 5800X is $449, and the amazing 5900X, combining the leadership performance and power efficiency of Zen 3 in a 12-core 7 nanometer design, is priced at $549. And all of these will be available globally on November 5th. Nice. We're really proud of the 5000 series, but you know we're not done. We love our enthusiasts, and there's one more processor in our stack which is the ultimate processor for gaming and content creation. For those of you who want the very best processor in a desktop PC, we have the 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X. 5950, the 5950X 50, okay. is simply an amazing CPU. 4.9, there you 16 go. 16 cores, 32 threads, 4 .9. and on our fastest processor with boost frequencies up to 4.9 gigahertz. The 5950X breaks the Cinebench R20 single-threaded record that Robert said just a few minutes ago with a score of 640. It is truly the best in class in every dimension. Best gaming performance meets best processor for content creation, and all of this still at 105 watts. Now let's take a look at some of the performance. If we look at the generational uplift from the 3950X to the 5950X, we see up to 27% more performance in CAD workloads and 12% more performance in rendering workloads. More impressively, we see up to 29% more gaming performance. And this is really how we bring the best of both worlds together. The best for gamers and the best for creators. And now if you put 5950X against the top of the stack from the competition, we see that the 5950X provides up to 59% more creative performance in rendering workloads. Oh, dang. Double digit wins in video editing and software compiling. And, and, and we also win in lightning threaded and as well. Yeah. We're, We're really, really proud, proud of the fact that, that we also win in gaming. gaming. There's, There's nothing, nothing like the 5950X in the world. <laughs> One, One processor that, that delivers the, the best power efficiency, our highest clock speeds, Mm. The, the highest single core performance in the industry, and the, and the highest multi-core performance of, of any gaming processor. And it's, and it's priced, priced at $799, and will also be available globally on November 5th. I hope you're now as excited about AMD Ryzen 5000 series as, as I, am. I am. Zen, Zen 3, 3 is, is really amazing, amazing and, I'm and I'm so happy we could show it to you today. But you guys send me a lot of notes and a lot of tweets, and I know that you're not just excited about Ryzen 5000 series, but there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and curiosity about our Radeon lineup as well. So the next few weeks are just an amazing time for us. In addition to introducing our Ryzen 5000 series, we're also going to introduce our next-gen Radeon GPU, and I want to give you a small preview of that today. Okay. This, this is, is the, the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series. series, which we now affectionately call Big Navi, thanks I to the nickname it for us. It is absolutely is so beautiful. gorgeous and by far the most powerful, powerful gaming GPU, GPU we have ever built. We got a lot of requests from our fans on social, and I heard a whole conversation on The Full Nerd last week about wanting to see Zen 3 and Big Navi in action. So today, I'm going to show you a preview of what you can expect from AMD Ryzen 9 5900X and our Radeon 6000 series. We've been doing a tremendous amount of work optimizing gameplay with Ryzen 5000 and Radeon 6000 series. So let me show you today Borderlands 3, event. which is a very popular AAA title running at 4K resolution on the Ryzen 5900X and our Radeon 6000 series. Just take a look at that performance. Over 60 frames per second at 4K with beautiful image quality. We are super excited with what we've accomplished with Big Navi. In addition to Borderlands 3, here's a bit more of a performance preview on Call of Duty Modern Warfare and, and Gears, Gears of War 5, 5 at, at ultra, ultra settings, settings in 4K. 4K. 
And again, what you see is tremendous oh. creepy performance across the board. We still, we still have a few weeks, weeks to launch, but the team worked really hard to find two things. Yeah, I think so. I hope you're as excited as we are about what the Rise 5 Out series and the Rise 6 Out series can do together for your next generation PC. So that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed today. It's been so much fun okay, spending okay. time with okay, you. Thank you. We have a lot more to show you later this month, so join us again on October 28th, where we'll give you the full story of our AMD Radeon RX. Oh, the RTX 3080. And make sure, sure you mark, mark your calendar for November 5th, 5th to find the really? 5000 series on um, I did test. Take care um, my FE got around 73 frames a second. So I, d I didn't quite notice the quality settings that were used. Um, but assuming they're like ultra, uh, which I might be able to go back. Cause... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Chill a minute. I might be able to go back because it is like just a video, so I might just be able to go oh, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Same on. thing. I've got the same thing. It's okay. You got it. I mean, oh, I know, but I want to. I want to find it for chat as well if I can. Uh, it... uh... Oh, someone said sorry. It was ultra. Someone in chat said it's ultra. So it's the same as the thirty eighty then. Yeah. So that was the fifty nine hundred X, not the fifty nine fifty, right? Um, yeah, they said, I think 59, either way, it's going to be GPU bound. So they're saying 73 frames a second. That's on par with the RTX 3080. Um, I have scored 73 frames a second with the Founders Edition. Right. That's our power limits. Okay, okay. The MSI Afterburner Gaming, so M Gaming X Trio variant score 74 it's a slight it's a slight increase okay so, so at least in borderlands 3 this no, particular... this is gears. sorry gears sorry um at yeah. least in gears um this is matching the rtx 3080 yeah. and obviously we don't know the price yet unless i blanked out and had a stroke but um oh, I think you had a stroke yeah so obviously it depends on the price and all that sort of stuff versus the 3080 because I don't think anyone expected the 3080 to be priced as competitively as it was. I was mm -hmm. genuinely in shock when Nvidia announced the prices uh, for the 3070 and 3080 and all that. So it's going to be interesting. And obviously we need to see more performance, but that's obviously going to be in a couple of weeks' time. Two days after my birthday, so a bit of a late birthday present from AMD there. <laughs> I mean... Uh, this actually tallies up so well with my leaks because I, I was told that the 3080 and the um, RDNA 2 architecture basically trade blows. It's like, it's going to come down so close to the wire, it's going to be like benchmarks and it's going to depend on a per game basis. Yeah, and obviously <clears throat> what they can do in terms of ray tracing as yep. well. That's going to be a big deciding factor, I think, because now that obviously the next gen consoles are introducing ray tracing, uh, I think more games are going to support it. Yeah, definitely. I this is roughly GPU performance wise, it's roughly what I expected. The CPUs, I knew they were going to be about twenty percent over Zen uh, over Zen two architecture. But the but games this... over the ten nine hundred K are pretty nuts to be honest well it's just it's over the just, the whole thing is just absolutely crazy like the performance increase her content creation i'm just taking a peek um adobe premiere you're looking at 13 percent increase which is no mean feat but v-ray is 59 percent um for the 5950x but the 5900 is just ridiculous like Looking at versus the 10900K, it's basically on par to anything 20%, 21% faster. But to me, the big the big improvement is versus the Zen 2 architecture. Yeah. Uh, it, it drop kicks Zen 2. It just absolutely demolishes it. It beats it with a stick. Yeah, it's... I mean, I'm just looking at the rise of the... T um, sorry, Shadow of the Tomb Raider increases. It's actually kind of crazy. One that's getting me actually, honestly, none of those as much as CSGO. Because CSGO, Intel always have come out on top because of the single thread performance. Mm. This is why they've incre they've included it. The fact, I know the others are more modern titles, but CSGO, they are now 
beating Intel in in single count performance, which means that's huge because um, competitive gamers are going to switch to AMD Ryzen CPUs um, because it's going to offer higher frame rates. Like they're going to play at like 1080p or whatever high refresh rate. Yeah, uh, they're going to crank. Yeah, it, it's just nuts. Like that is that is brutal. And they've also another reason that they've chosen Far Cry is because um, the engine scales like crap across multiple threads. Mm. So I and also they've I think they've chosen like League of Legends for that same reason. So this is brutal. Like they've actually chosen they haven't cherry picked results. They've actually chosen results that AMD does typically really bad with. Yeah, yeah. The exception of a few of them like Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. games like League of Legends and CSGO, Intel just kick the tar out of them up until yeah. now. Mm. So yeah. There's not much I can say other than that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Really impressive. That's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> um, well, uh, Christmas is going to be expensive for people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's like, what... Um, What's the price again? Like seven four nine, I think, for the most expensive one. Uh, yeah, seven nine nine, I think, for the the big daddy. But let me let me find it again. Um, I'm a little sad that I did. Oh, there we go. So, fifty nine hundred X is five four nine. I'm really baffled. Yeah, five four nine. Huh? Sorry, I, I I get the prices of the five four nine for the fifty nine hundred X, right? Right. And the fifty eight X is four four nine. Yeah. It kind of feels like what is the point? I don't know. I just yeah, I, mean, I feel like the hundred bucks is, is it doesn't sound like a lot of difference, and in such some people it isn't, but you know, a hundred pounds is a lot of money, like especially if you're building an entire new rig, you know. Yeah, I mean, every um, penny counts when it comes to that sort of stuff. I mean, obviously, you can see, just use your AM4 motherboard and stuff for this, but yeah. You were right, by the way, on the prices of the CPU is seven nine nine for the. Yeah, I um, thought the the fifty nine fifty X was. Uh, yeah, I mean, thirty two threads. Uh, still, like you said, it would be. I, I knew core counts and threads would be the same. Yeah, um, I yeah. don't think. That's the thing I find most interesting, there's two things. One, the rumor that the 5950X is going to launch later, that's just out of window. And the second, I don't remember where the rumor started. I think it was like a tech YouTuber. I can't remember the name now. Um, I'm oh, trying gosh. to... But there was a rumor that the box were like 5 gigahertz with a TDP of 150 watts. Obviously, that's just not the case. 105 watts still. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, pretty crazy. I thought there was something a bit weird about that rumor, though, because it's like that would essentially mean that certain motherboards would go boom. But obviously, unless you have something to counteract that information, um, I don't. I'm hearing um, motherboard vendors have just announced like new revisions of their boards. Um, yeah, like I, mean, the, I think it's called Max series or something like that. To be honest, the question I have with the 5950X is, you know. Overclocking, probably push to five gigahertz, maybe. Um, I would be interested to see how PBO works on it. Yeah. Like if you crank PBO up, but ultimately, yeah, it's like. I'm sure you could get to five gigahertz. I don't know if you could do it all threads or cores, but I'm sure you could do it. Like you know. Yeah, I'm sure um... it's possible. Yeah, I mean, there's some crazy overclockers out there with like their liquid nitrogen setups and all that. So. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Like, I I have to admit, I would be very curious to try out an eight four sixteen thread fifty eight hundred X, um, and just see how it performs against like a thirty seven hundred X. Um, just in general, I would I would be curious to see how that would perform uh, in games mm. with like a high end graphics card because I think the fifty nine hundred X is amazing. Yeah, but I would be curious to see. I guess what I'm saying is, with the uh, a couple of years' time, a year's time, 
because of the increased CPU grunt that games are going to need. I mean, I would say that even the 5800X with baked all 16 threads, I don't see that we're going to need more than that for PC gaming for yeah. a long time. Because, yeah. But the only negative I have for these processors, um, they're great for people who have, let's just say, for example, you know, you've got like a 2700X or whatever. Yeah. But if you own a 9900K and you game only, eh, do you really want to upgrade? And I'm, I'm asking that question. I don't know. Like, I know people who own, like, you know, 9900Ks or 10700Ks or whatever. And I'm not saying that Intel are not beaten here. They, they blatantly are. Yeah. Uh, so technical reason, yeah, you're faster. And I'm sure people who have, like, you know, tons of money, fine, feel free, you know, go for it. Um, and it does have benefits like PCIe Gen 4, which is, again, arguable. But if you have a 9900K, is it... I don't know if people are going to jump on this because... Like, are you just going to wait until the next generation? Seeing some people were commenting on Twitter earlier, and they were mentioning, they're just going to say, screw it, wait until DDR5, uh, because they're happy on, like, you know, whatever CPU they've got. Yeah. I don't know. It's very interesting. It's definitely an interesting... I mean, Intel have just, just been put on notice. There is nothing else to yeah, say. I mean, they've just been... Yeah, I mean, as we said, stop, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, you know what? If I if I wasn't like kind of wired in here because I've got like wires trailing behind me because I'm moving and stuff, I was literally going to get up and do like a kind of elbow drop to pretend it was Intel. But I was like, yeah, okay, maybe, that, maybe let's not do that because I'm kind of like wired in. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of effort. So I'll end up tripping over something. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I can't really say much um, more than that. That's, no. That's um, oh wait, yeah, sorry, I misread your question there. About Zen 3. Sorry, don't worry. Someone in chat asked a question, but I misread it. Don't worry about me. Uh, what did you They're say? They, they were asking if Zen 3 was the last for AM4. Uh, I, I thought it said so. I thought it said the last for A and B, and I was about to be like, no, but then I actually read it properly. <laughs> um, Stop I think, being a Pager um, for two minutes. I think um, it's going to be very interesting, though, what happens from now. Because this processor, um, Intel have basically confirmed that Rocket Lake is not... What is that your phone going ding? Yeah, sorry. Um, let me just put... I mean, I need to keep it on because I might get a message from my 9 to 5 job. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, basically, I think that the... Um... Well, yeah, but I didn't see Threadripper at all there. That's a good point, actually. No, uh, that's going to be next year. Yeah, but literally not even a tease, nothing. Oh, they need to save those precious dyes. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I, I'm I'm going to be very curious to see. It seems like they're beating they're beating. Shut up, OneDrive. No one loves you. Um, it's just whining. <laughs> it's not signed in. Uh, it seems like they're stomping AM uh, Intel. Yeah. And I think they're going to be roughly on par with AM with uh, Nvidia. I think my prediction though is that AMD will still be behind. In ray tracing performance, I might be wrong. But, right. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, Rocket Lake is not launching until Q1, apparently. So mm, that could be a problem for Intel. <laughs> yes, it could. I I'm not saying that Intel are screwed, because they do have their branding, and that obviously is really you know important. Mm. But I'm not quite sure what they're going to do. Uh, they can't. They, there's no way they can spin this marketing-wise. There's just no way. It's just too much. Um, so I think that it's just going to have to take the L for now. Yeah, probably. But um, I think obviously what we're all really looking forward to is what they have in store for us, Big Navi. But yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Mm. 
has always been so popular. Um, people can justify coughing up like, you know, 500 or so US dollars a lot better. And also, NVIDIA typically operate on a, they know that people generally upgrade every two generations. It's why a lot of the time, uh, NVIDIA has been comparing against the 10 series. It's not because they they don't want to show it versus the 20 series. It's because they know that they need to convince 10 series owners to upgrade rather than 20 series owners. Yeah, sorry, I was just, for some reason, you were suddenly muted, so I was just trying to fix that. <laughs> Fair enough. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, I... that was a really good event. You know, a bit short, to be honest. I kind of thought they would go on a bit longer, Come maybe. On. Sorry? It's about 30 minutes. It 25 was 30 minutes. minutes. So I thought maybe it'd be a touch longer. Maybe they'll go into a bit more of the technical side, but they'll probably have a different thing for that, to be honest. I think they just wanted to show here are the CPUs, here's the benchmarks, here's the prices. F and chat for Intel, basically. <laughs> I just saw the top comment. Uh, someone said 8th of October is also the same day when Lisa Sue became the CEO of AMD. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, I don't understand why people are disliking this. It's like, dude, why? I mean, if they dislike this, then their standards, I would have questions about how high they are, to be honest. Because <laughs> I was very I impressed by what they showed. I just wanted to see more, because it looks so good. I was like, oh, show me more. But obviously, we can't. <laughs> we know how many, we know there's at least 320 employees at Intel at this point. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. No, I, you know what? To be honest, <laughs> I don't think. Um, although I'm sure the UK, um, sorry, I know the PR guys are worried, but I'm sure that Intel deep down know that they're going to be fine in the long haul. I mean, of course, uh, you know, we're making jokes and saying, you know, he's dead, Jim, and all that, but you know, it's Intel; they'll be fine. <laughs> they have more money fine. than God at this point. <laughs> It's fine. It's all fine. It's uh, fine. You know what? You know what? Nvidia actually technically have a bigger market cap than both Intel and AMD. I only learned that quite recently. Oh really? I didn't so, know that. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's literally Papa provides everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, Papa Jensen basically at this point, he could buy like a country. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, he could. I mean, it's like you know, Microsoft. How much money they have. Like they showed out all that money for Zenimax, and they've you know, they probably had to like dig around their pocket, like oh, oh, oh there you go. <laughs> probably, like, probably Phil was like, oh, I don't want to get you know, I don't want to buy a coffee for everyone in Microsoft this month, so we they're, they're going to have to buy their own coffee because we need to get Zenimax. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Satya, can can I just dig behind your couch a bit? Yeah, yeah, dig it, behind it's... the sofa cushions. <laughs> 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 it's like you know when when a company could just casually drop seven and a half billion US dollars. Oh yeah, and they're just like just I... yeah. I mean that's what they call <laughs> fu money. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's why I think it's always funny that the narrative of like oh Xbox is screwed or something like that. It's like dude, you realize how much Microsoft have right in terms of I income. Mean, Xbox is a small small part of what what makes Microsoft their money. Mm -hmm. Like. They obviously got destroyed this generation, but did, they don't really care. I mean, obviously they'd prefer if they didn't, but ultimately they're like, eh, take it on the chin, learn from it, and there we go. Exactly. But, um, yeah, I uh, I suppose I better get going now and yes. start recording my actual video yes. um, for the day. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you, thank you. We will see you probably for the next one uh, on the 28th of October. Yes, and uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be similarly as hypey. Hmm. Right. Uh, that's just my, just my gut feeling. Yeah, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, uh, I'm not surprised that um, NVIDIA have done certain things. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, launches and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a topic for another day. You need to get up with your stuff. I really need to use the bathroom. We've all got places to be. <laughs> all right, catch you guys later. All right, Bye. see you guys soon. Bye-bye.